Yo, 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 what is good, YouTube? It is your boy, Make America Lit, back with another NBA 2K22 video. And in today's video, we are going to be ranking all of the finishing badges in NBA 2K22. Now, like always, I just want to preface the video by saying that the rankings on the left side aren't indicative of the badge levels that I would be running these badges at. These are just like the rankings or whatever that they have for this, uh, for this uh, tier or whatever, for the uh, best finishing badges for guards, tier lists, or whatever like that. Now, obviously, um, we're just going to be starting out. These are just, again, my opinions. You know, obviously, if you feel differently, leave a comment down below telling me what you would change or what you think are the top or best badges or where you rank these finishing badges in NBA 2K22. So let's just jump right into it. First badge we have is Slithery Finisher, and I'm going to be putting that in the top tier um, just because I feel like this is one of the top finishing badges. Now, it's obviously not the best finishing badge probably in my opinion but it is definitely a top tier finishing badge as well um i would put fast twitch in there especially uh because they nerfed the way uh a lot of things in this game they nerfed the speed of standing layups standing uh dunks and stuff like that they nerfed the speed of dribbling and stuff like that just so that they can add in certain badges like hyperdrive quick chain fast twitch and stuff like that so i feel like this these are you know fast twitch is definitely one of those badges you definitely need mouse in the house i have is unequipped just because like i mean I, I rarely run this badge i think i might put it on bronze if i was talking about a badge tier level but i very rarely run this badge i mean the difference in height that you would need for this badge to pop up it's one of those situational type badges where you know, you might set a screen and then the point guard might get put on you on the switch or something like that. That's the only time this badge is really useful. Nobody's really making 6'7 or 6'8 bigs. And you're just, as a big, not going to really get to use this badge. Most of all, Pretty much all of my bigs are 6'11. So I really wouldn't get much use out of this because most bigs aren't going to be 6'7. I think I would need a, a height difference of 4 or 5 inches. So it just, it just wouldn't make a... Uh, proper use for me to run this badge now if you're a 7-3 big obviously but you know you would get good use out of this badge if you're going up against a lot of 6-8s and 6-9s and stuff like that but again for the most part it's very situational you're not going to get much use out of this badge so i have it as unequipped but i do run it on bronze on my inside center on my outside center i don't run this badge at all uh so i have it under unequipped um teardrop i have is bronze this is another one of those badges that like if chase down artists wasn't so overpowered chase down blocks in general in this game wasn't so overpowered this badge would be I, I would have more use out of this badge but again uh this is one of those badges that i think was better in previous 2ks than it is now and i feel like they really just need to either boost it or just you know nerf uh blocks and stuff like that to make people you know really bring out the floater and stuff like that and then Next badge I'm going to put on this list is going to be Pro Touch, which I have unequipped. Now, the very first time I played NBA 2K22, I had my layup timing on, obviously, because I was used to having layup timing and stuff like that on in NBA 2K22. I mean, 2K21. Um, I was on a fast break in a part game. 3v3 part game. Uh, one of my first games, I had all my badges and stuff like that because I literally, the first weekend that the game came out, I did not play anything except my career to grind my badges because I was not willing to screw up my record or my shooting percentages by not having badges, right? First game, I'm on a fast break by myself. I go to lay the ball up. I got a white layup, you know, timed it slightly early, slightly later, whatever. You know, a white layup that normally goes in, and I missed the layup. Even with bronze pro touch on, I missed the layup. And that was when I realized, okay, I got to turn layup timing on tit layup timing off and you know pretty much this badge is useless without layup timing on uh you're not going to get the, the additional boost for slightly early slightly late so excellent release good timings for layups or whatever unless you have layup timing on so i feel like everybody in this game runs layup timing off because the situation like i just described where you will miss the perfectly not perfectly time layup but a really good time layup will miss more often than not even when you're running bronze or silver pro touch and bronze and silver was like really the you know the sweet spot in 2k21 and even 2k20 and then 
2K22, you just have people just missing wide open layups and stuff like that or late, barely contested layups. So for me, Pro Touch is just a badge that I don't touch because I just keep layup timing off. Fearless Finisher is one of those badges that I'm putting in gold, uh, the gold ranking or whatever, just because this badge is very, very useful. The main reason I see I, I see people saying they don't like this badge is because they think that it's going to just make them make every single layup. No, this is a good safety net badge. That's how I look at this badge as a safety net. This badge I run is for when I'm going up for a dunk and posterize I don't get the dunk animation. This is for when a six foot one guard is running behind you and they pull you out of a dunk animation or even a guard or a small forward, they pull you out of that dunk animation because they're on your back or whatever. Fearless finisher will kick in and it will be considered a, you know, contact layup because they're on your back, they're jumping, it's contested or whatever like that. And fearless finisher will kick in and more often than not, you'll make the layup with bronze or silver fearless finisher. So that's why I have a fearless finisher on this gold tier. It's very, very useful for when 2K screws you on the uh dunk animations same thing with posterizer i have this gold uh just because just having this on bronze is the difference between making a dunk with the center near you and or just in the vicinity of you versus not having this i i have this badge on bronze on my 6-4 uh play shot and i only have one finishing badge on my play shot and just having this on bronze is the difference between me making dunks on centers and not same thing with my two-way sharpshooter just having this on bronze, I'm able to finish alley-oop dunks and two-hand dunks, one-hand tomahawks and stuff like that on centers, 6'10 centers with, you know, Hall of Fame Intimidator and stuff. So just having this badge on bronze, I feel like it's a very, very strong badge. Um, unstrippable, I have on unequipped because I just personally don't use this badge. I don't really notice uh, me getting ripped when I go up for alley, uh, you know, dunks or layups or anything like that. I do know everybody like to run ball stripper, but I just personally feel like I don't get stripped like that. So there's really no point in me wasting my points on this badge. Now, obviously on my inside center, I like to run this badge, you know, on bronze occasionally. But again, like I said, a lot of times I end up taking this badge off because I just feel like it's just not. I don't get stripped enough to warrant using this badge, so I, I don't run it. Um, Giant Slayer bronze uh, ranking just because, again, I like to run this badge on bronze, and obviously, again, like I said, the, the the tier list isn't indicative on what level I run the badge at, but I like to run Giant Slayer Bronze just because if you read the description, it does say that it reduces the chance of getting blocked, so I just like it just for that. You know, um, yeah, if you do lay the ball up on a taller opponent, you do get a boost, uh, you know, to making the layup or whatever like that, but me personally, I like Giant Slayer just because it reduces the chance of me getting blocked. Uh, I do like to run this badge on bronze. I don't really put it higher than that other than when I was testing out the levels and stuff like that, seeing how good the badge is and stuff like that. But this is one of those badges I just slap on bronze and I just forget about it and just use it just for, you know, not being blocked. Same thing with put back boss. I just run it on bronze just for a little boost. I usually, if I'm getting a rebound on my inside center, I'm usually trying to pass it out with post playmaker get that assist or whatever like that and you know threes are better than twos you know what i'm saying but on those chances when you do or when you are in good position or whatever like that you do want to go back up or whatever you will get that nice little boost on just having this badge on bronze so i do feel like put back boss is a decent badge and also if you want to unlock the contact dunks i mean the put back dunk animations the uh put back layup animations and stuff like that you know catching those crazy putbacks and stuff like that you gotta have you know how to time your shot and you put a uh, layup time and stuff like that on or whatever this this badge is going to be very vital you know if you have like an 85 plus uh post hook or whatever like that you are going to just i've seen seven three bigs just dominate people in the paint like just literally just greening hook after hook after hook after hook 
you know, this this is a really good badge, you know, and they're, they're able to do it because they have high post hook, but they're also able to do it because they have this badge on Hall of Fame. So Hook Specialist is definitely one of those top tier badges. Um, now, people are going to call me crazy, but I have Limitless take off in the gold ranking just because it is a very vital badge to finish and it's a very good badge. But what people fail to understand about Limitless Takeoff is that Limitless Takeoff is only as good as your dunk rating. And what I mean by that is that if you don't have the dunk rating needed for certain dunk packages, you aren't going to get the most out of Limitless Takeoff. Like a lot of people like it to use it in combination with Quick Drops Off 1 and that is one of the dunk packages that uh, you would need in order to do that and you only need a 65 driving dunk to get quick drops off one which is very nice or whatever which means that if you are a person with like one to three finishing badges and stuff like that that means your driving dunk probably isn't super high it's like in the 70s or something you'll still get quick drops off one you'll still be able to capitalize gold limitless takeoff with quick drops off one which is cool but to get the most out of limitless takeoff you want the jordan uh michael jordan dunk package you know you want the uh some of the tomahawk dunk, dunk packages, the straight arms and stuff like that. You want the Clyde Drexler dunk packages. Those dunk packages are going to be the ones that give you that, uh, you know, take off from further off or whatever. Start your, you know, animation from quicker, farther off or whatever, which means you'll be dunking the ball faster. So if you don't have those dunk packages, which requires you to have like an 80 plus driving dunk or whatever, you're not going to get the most use out of this uh, badge, which is why I just feel like, you know, it, it's not in the top tier, you know, because there is a dunk or attribute requirement for it. So that's why I have it in gold tier, in my opinion. But again, like I said, if you do have the dunk attributes required to get those dunk packages, then you could move this up to Hall of Fame. Most of my bills don't have that uh, requirement besides my inside center. So I would probably put this in a gold ranking. Still useful badge, but it's just not as good. You know what I'm saying? And then I have Acrobat and Silver, or I would put Acrobat and Silver just because, again, you you value dunks over, you know, layups. If you had to choose, you know, the name of the game is threes, right? And if you can't get a three, you want a dunk. And if you can't get a dunk, then you start to settle for, like, maybe a mid-range shot. Then you settle for, like, a layup, a floater, a shot down low, you know. But basically, you know, the shots that you want to go for are high percentage shots. Or shots that are wide open you know people hunt threes because it's the most shot on the court that you can get the most points for and then the next next the next best thing is dunks or alley-oops because those are guaranteed pretty much guarantee or as close as to guarantee points as a green shot or whatever you know a dunk or alley dunk you know so uh you know i feel like acrobat is one of those underrated badges it is but you know, I would value Fearless Finisher and Posterizer over just Acrobat. Now, here's the thing. This is the reason why I feel like Acrobat, you can move Acrobat to the gold ranking. And that's just because they took Fancy Footwork out. And when they took Fancy Footwork out, that means you took out a badge that helped you with spin layups, uh, Euro step layups, hop step layups, all of these layups. With Acrobat, you're going to get a boost for uh, Europe layups double clutch layups reverse layups uh hop step layups spin layups pretty much every form of a layup you can think of you're going to get boost for that you know what i'm saying so that's the reason why i technically would put it in gold but again i feel like you want to be valuing valuing dunks over layups or whatever like that which is why i have posterized and limitless in that category just above acrobat you know, um, some people would probably put Fearless in the silver, but again, like I said, this is one of those badges that is going to help you more often than you think, and you're not even thinking about using a badge uh, when you get pulled out of dunks and stuff like that. Acrobat is going to just boost those layups as well, too. Um, Grace Under Pressure is another one of those top-tier badges that I have, for, um, especially for big men or whatever around the cup. This is going to be like your pro touch, I guess, but you getting that boost without even needing the meter on. And what people don't fail to realize is that the reason why you see a lot of those bigs making ridiculous shots so close to the basket, some of them are running the meter on with Pro Touch, but they're also running Grace Under Pressure. So they're going to get that, you know, double boost for having Pro Touch and Grace Under Pressure or whatever like that. Um, post spin Technician, 
another one of those gold badges that I think is really good. This year, I didn't see a lot of people utilizing the post spin as, as much as they used to. Post spin technician used to be one of those badges that people spammed a lot because the animations were so strong. Maybe it's because you don't get the animations or the post spin animation as often, or maybe because more people are running post lockdown. I really don't know what the reason is. I just know that I don't see a lot of people running this badge as often or even using the post spin as often as they would, you know, the drop step or the back down. Uh, but when I did use this badge, I know it was it was very effective or whatever like that of doing what I needed, especially when I had um, used my inside big, which has high strength and speed or whatever. Um, Dream shape I have on unequipped because I just feel like, you know, uh, this is more like a, a my career offline CPU type of badge. I mean, you can stun people. But me personally, when I was using this badge, I personally never seen a stun animation. Maybe I wasn't running it high enough. Maybe people weren't just biting on a fake. Or maybe people had post lockdown on Hall of Fame or Gold. I don't know. But what I can tell you is that I personally didn't see a lot of stun animations with Dream Shape. You know, versus human players. You know what I'm saying? Again, like I said, obviously it's going to work pretty well when you play in my career. And you're playing on like Pro or All-Star Difficulty against the AI and stuff like that, but ultimately we want these badges when we're playing online against other human players, and I just feel like Dream Shake didn't give me the stun, anima stun animations that I wanted or at a frequency that I like seeing stun animations. Um, Lob City Finisher, another one of those utility badges. I have this in silver because I personally don't run it higher than bronze. I feel like bronze gets the job done with a bronze Lob City Finisher and a bronze Posterizer. You're going to complete most alley oops, uh, dunks, and stuff like that, or whatever, like that. Just, com just pairing these two together is just nice, in my opinion. Uh, you know, the higher you put it, obviously, the higher chance or percentages of chances of you completing alley oop. But me personally, just like years past in 2K21 and 20 and 19 and stuff, you know, you just want this on bronze at least, and you're going to be able to complete those alley oops and dunks and stuff like that. And then finally, we have Rise Up, which I feel is one of the more important badges because it's a very good badge. Uh, it helps you speed up dunks and uh, layups, standing dunks, standing layups and stuff like that underneath the basket. But also, I realized that for some reason, it seemed to give me more contact dunk animations when I'm underneath the basket and stuff like that versus when I didn't have this. So I would probably even think about considering moving this to the Hall of Fame ranking just because I feel like I value this over posterizer i felt like i was getting more contact dunk animations with hall of fame rise up versus hall of fame posterizer or gold posterizer so if you're looking for contact dunks or you're hunting for contact dunk animations big man contact dunk animations and stuff contact dunks underneath the rim rise up is going to be your friend more often than posterizer is so there you have it those are my rankings for the finishing badges in nba 2k22 it's been your boy, Make America Lit. Please be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe for more NBA 2K22 content, badge breakdown videos. And please be sure to drop your own rankings in the comment of what you think are some of the top or best tier uh, finishing badges in NBA 2K22. I'm out. Peace.